Let's look at the National 5 Admin and IT 2022 question paper. It's based around a golf tournament and we'll be looking at the spreadsheet and database tasks. So we're looking at questions one and two in these videos. So starting with question 1A and 1B, it's a spreadsheet. You'll see there a cash statement and there's also a summary sheet we have to work on as well. And I can see here that we have a spreadsheet file called tournament costs. Now, when we're working on spreadsheets, you've got to think about what you may be tested on by the SQA. So looking here at the table of all the things you have to be able to do from creating and editing and formatting a workbook, all the things you might be asked to do, not in every question, but it might might be there. And then looking at the functions and the formulas, so the arithmetical things you have to do, add, subtract, divide, multiply, using these functions, the count and count A and the if function, also being able to link between worksheets and using the name cells and the relative and absolute cell referencing, as well as being able to sort. You will find comments on the spreadsheets that you have to action and delete. Sometimes they're known as comments. Sometimes you'll see them as notes. It's the same thing in Excel, comments, notes, but you have to be able to action them and then delete them before you print. Let's now look at the actual task itself. You'll see there it's based on the T Golf Course Charity Golf Tournament. It's telling us the numbers have been finalised, asking to open up the spreadsheet called Tournament Costs and follow the instructions. There's some things we have to do before we print, which we'll come on to at the end. And we have extra notes here, these four additional notes. This information here will need to go into the spreadsheet at some point. So let's now open up the spreadsheet and have a look. Let's now look at the spreadsheet tournament costs. Now, we've got two worksheets here. The one that's open is called Cash Statement, and we have, have another one called Summary. Both of them have numbered comment boxes, and I, in fact, have brought in the additional information from the question paper into this spreadsheet here. You won't have that when you open up your files, but it's just to make things a bit easier for us today. So looking at the first comment box, number one, increase the size of the font and embolden rows one and two. So we're just going to go to rows one and two, up to bold like that. And then the font size, let's make it bigger. doesn't tell us how big to make it. I'll just go for 16. Now I am going to delete the comments off as I'm going along. You might want to wait until the end so you can go back and check everything. So I'm going to right click and in my version of Excel you'll notice here is deleting the note. It's the same thing, note comment, but we'll delete the note. The second thing, insert a new row above adult entries and enter details of the sponsorship from Scott Golf. Well, inserting a row above, let's just click in row six, that's the adult entries. We can right click and insert. And there is the line ready for us, the row ready for us. The note from the question there, uh, the wee text message, which Scott Golf have agreed to sponsor the tournament and have awarded us £5,000. So let's get some information in. So let's put in here Scott Golf. Doesn't tell us to put in the word sponsorship, but it is there above. So let's make it clear in the sheet that this is money coming in from sponsorship. And we can just type in there 5,000. It has been formatted already, so that's why the pound sign and the comma and the decimal place has appeared automatically. So let's just now delete the, that second note. We have to insert a formula to calculate the income from adult and junior entries. So where do we get that information? Well, I can see there's a box down here and it's telling me what the entry fee is going to be. So £65 per adult for entering into the tournament and a junior will pay 50. So we know what the fee is going to be, but how many are there of the adults and juniors? Well, again, from the note I brought across, I can see here this post-it note, there's 22 adults and 15 juniors have entered in for the competition. So that's what we need for the formula. So in cell B7, 
We start with an equals. Remember, in Excel, it needs an equals to start the formula. And we'll click here on the adult price, which is held in cell B24. And we're going to multiply by the number 22. There's 22 adults have entered. So that is the formula for the first one. We do the same for the junior entries in, in cell B8. It's equals. I can see here the junior price there is 50 in cell B25 multiplied by there's 15 juniors like that. All right. So that is how we do the, the formulas there for the income from the adult and junior entries. Let's just delete that note off. Number four, insert a formula to calculate total income. Different ways you can do this. I think the quickest way, I'm going to click in the cell where I want the answer, which is in cell C9. I'm in the Home tab, right along to the right hand side, Auto Sum, click straight on it. Sometimes if there's numbers above, well actually if there's numbers above, Excel will highlight the range of numbers there, but it doesn't know which numbers it wants you to add. So we're going to have to manually go across starting in cell B5 and then just copying down to get the four numbers there and click on enter. Let's just delete the note. All right then, number five, insert a formula to calculate hire of golf buggies and lunch. So I can see there in cell B12 and B13, two different entries. Looking at the hire of golf buggies, again, I can see from my cost there that they're going to be hiring them out at um, 11 pounds per person. Well, how many do we need? Well, let's look at these additional notes that we brought from the question paper. And it says here, half the adults want to hire golf buggies and everyone will be having lunch. So we know there's 22 adults. So half of 22 is 11. So 11 times the buggy hire of 11 pounds is the formula we need. It's either 11 times buggy hire or buggy hire times number of adults. Doesn't matter which way you do it. So in cell B12 equals, and let's click on the buggy hire in cell in E25, sorry, E25, and we're multiplying by half the adults, so that's going to be 11. And click on enter, and that's that one done. To work out the lunch, everyone is having lunch, and I can see here the total entries is 37. So it's 37 times lunch, or lunch times 37. So clicking in cell B13 equals, let's click on the, the, the cost of the lunch in E24, and we're multiplying by 37 and click on enter. So that's the two costs there calculated. And again, let's just delete the note. Insert a formula to calculate the total expenditure in cell C16. So again, the way I would do it, click in cell C16, go up to auto sum. Excel has chosen the total income figure, which is not the one we want. So I'm just gonna override that by manually selecting the range of cells that I need to work out the total expenditure. So now we have the income and we've got total income and total expenditure. And in fact, I'll just delete that note as well. Number seven, insert a formula to calculate the cash raise. A simple subtraction. So in cell C17 equals the income in C9 minus the total expenditure and click on enter. And that's that one dealt with. Number eight, if cash raised is greater than 10,000, then 75% will be donated to charity. Otherwise, 60% will be donated. So we've got to think of the formula. We're gonna work out how much are we giving to charity? There's a wee clue, the word if is in there, and also talks about um, you know, if the cash is greater than 10,000, then 75% will be donated, otherwise 60% will be. So that is actually, even the way it's been written, that is an if statement that we need to do. 
Now there's two ways to do an if statement. I'll show you both ways depending on what you've been taught. So the first way I'm going to use the function argument box. I'm going to click into cell C18. I will start typing the formula for an if statement. So equals if and open bracket. So if you've been shown how to use the function argument box, at this point, I go up to formulas, then insert function, and then we have this function argument box that allows us to do it step by step. Up here in the formula bar, you'll see how the formula is going to get typed in, what it's going to look like by the end. So what is the logical test? What are we looking at? Well, what we're saying is, is we're saying if, and I don't have to type in the word if into this box, it's actually already showing up here in the formula bar. So let's just start typing it in. So what we're saying here is, if the value in C17, if it finds more than, greater than 10,000 pounds, now notice I don't need pound signs or decimals or commas, just the actual number. So what we're saying is, if that is true, so in the second box here, if that is true, what are we going to do? Well, if it is more than 10,000, we're going to take the cash raised and we're going to multiply by 75%. We're looking to get 75% of 10,000 or whatever the value is, sorry. All right, so that's what we'll do if it's true. If it's not more than 10,000, therefore, if it's less than 10,000, then what we'll do with that one is we will take the cash raised and they won't be getting quite so much. We're going to multiply by 60%. So 60% is going to go to charity. It is returning an amount there of £5,114.70. So it looks like we've done everything correctly. And let's just click on OK. And there it's returned that. Now the other way you might have been shown to do an if statement is without the function argument box. And that's OK. We're just using commas to move us from section to section. So we start with equals if again and open the bracket. Again, we're saying the logical test is we're looking at the figure, the value in cell C17, and we're saying if it's greater than 10,000, and as I do a comma, it will jump to the next section. We're in the logical test at the moment. You'll see that's in bold, comma, and now in bold it's saying, what is the value if true? What are you going to do? Well, like the last time, we take the value and we multiply, multiply by 75%. Otherwise, so with another comma, and you'll see it'll jump now to value of false, so with a comma, it jumps across. Otherwise, we'll take the value and we will multiply by 60%. And then I'm going to just close the bracket. So that's the other way that you, you, you might have been shown how to do the if statement. It's the same, same thing. And let's play, click, click on enter. So the last thing we have to do is work out the surplus. And we've raised the cash here, £8,522.40. £24.50 24 actually. Um, and less donation to charity of £5,114.70. So it's a simple subtraction. Equals the cash raised minus the donation to charity, what is the club left with? It's left with their £3,409.80. I can see their number nine is asking you to insert a formula to calculate the surplus, which we've done, and name the cell appropriately. So let's go into cell C19. You'll see there up here in the name box in the left-hand corner, it's showing C19, which is correct, but to give it a name instead of a cell reference, let's go up, highlight it, delete it off, and then we're going to call it, let's just call it T surplus. All right, now you can't have a space when you're naming a box, so if you have two words, you'd have to do underscore like that. So let's call it T surplus and click on enter. And if we actually click away and go back in again, you'll see now the word T surplus has appeared. We have named that box. Let me just delete the uh, last couple of notes here. It's asking us to format all cells appropriately. Well, actually everything does look fine here and let's just delete that off. 
last thing to do is just check our notes that we brought across from the question. We've dealt with everything except for insert the name of the golf course in row two. Just to remind ourselves what that is, let's go back and look at the question. There it is. So it's the T golf course. So that is what we have to put in to row two. So in row two, let's put in T golf course. It doesn't tell us whether or not to put it in capital letters or not, but I'm just keeping it consistent uh, with the row above. So that's us done everything in the first sheet.